بسم الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعيذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we bear witness that no one has the right to be worshipped and obeyed unconditionally except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask him to send out peace and blessings over Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family and companions and the people who follow him to the day of judgment and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among them Amin. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa halaqatam lisani yafqahu qawli O my Lord open for me my chest grant me self-confidence, contentment and boldness and ease my task for me and make loose the tongue, the not the defect from my tongue so they understand my speech. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So this is our last, our last talk, my last talk here. It was a pleasure uh, being here with all of you. Thank you. So we're going to talk today about the staying on the right path. So what does it mean to be on the right path? Uh, hidayah or balance. Actually when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed um, hidayah on someone, it's actually a gift, it's a blessing that we are, uh, you know, Allah gave us this hidayah, put us on the right path. But how it's our job to maintain it, to stay on that path. It's about submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his commands. It's the path of the prophets on his and all his their families. So it's something familiar. It's it's been there. We know about it from previous uh, people and previous prophets before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So what does hidayah mean? Is to have resilience, grit, consistency, and firmness in our belief. We need to be confident. Allah subhanahu wa taala always in the Quran when He talks about the believer, He always mentions alatina amanu wa amilu salihat. So they believe and also they follow that with actions. So it's not enough to have the belief in our heart. We need to follow that with actions. Whether our prayers, fasting, the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat others. We need to have a balance. So it's not la ifrata wa la tafrit. So we don't go so much to the right or too much to the left. We need to have khair al-umur al-wasat. We need to be in the middle. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always said that we need to always ask Allah for forgiveness. Inna al-hasanata yudhibna sayyat. So we are expected to do mistakes. But if when we do good deeds, this will wipe out the bad ones. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, uh, the Prophet and the previous Prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, said, Rabbana thabbat aqdamana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a, this is a, a, a dua that the Prophet and the, the Prophet وسلم, always say to make our feet firmly planted on the Sirat al Mustaqim, on the right path. And that will require us to work, to do some actions, to learn and teach the Quran and what the Prophet وسلم, taught us. So, how do we know that we are on the right path? There are some indications. First one, that we have a firm connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with ourselves and others. We are able to form this bond with others. We're feeling at peace and content. And I, I think this, those are some notes, some, some points that we can take notes. Do we feel that way? What are we lacking? What can we work on? Do we recognize the difference between our current self and old self? I was at the mental health conference and one of the speakers said, if you don't look back and ask yourself, how did I do that? About something you did like years back and you saw a difference that you, nowadays you will not do that action again. If you don't ask this, yourself this question, there is, so there is no growth. When you think back and you realize that you did something five, 10 years ago, but you wouldn't do that again, this is an indication of growth. So instead of looking back and feeling guilty about something, actually appreciate your growth and maturity. This is a good sign. So you wanna keep going despite the difficulties. 
فإن مع العسر يسرى إن مع العسر يسرى So regardless of difficulties you know that you are going you keep going because there is and you have this belief that with every difficulty there are two eases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that فإن مع العسر يسرى إن مع العسر يسرى Another indication of that we are on the right path that we don't think a lot about the past or worry much about the future which sometimes in psychology that reflects on anxiety and depression but we think of the moment and we plan for the future but we don't worry about it because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us we can be physically exhausted but we are satisfied mentally we know that we are doing the right thing this feeling when you feel that your feelings and your mind and your feelings your heart everything is aligned that's a great feeling if you feel that that's an indication you're on the right path and if not that's something to think about and to work on so how to stay on the right path what do we do so there are two parts the first is al ibadat al dunya which is the internal ibadat and the second one is al-ibadat al-zahiriya, which is the, the outer part. What do we mean by the internal ibadat? It's how we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, are we certain or do we have doubts? It's about what goes inside your heart. How we respond to what happens in our life. This is an indication of the status, status of the heart. As for the ibarat al-zahiriya, or the out part, the outer part ibadat, the prayers, the fasting, guarding the tongue, the eyes, the ears, what do we do with all of these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us? So when we talk about the right path, we want to think about first things first, which is the heart. The Prophet sallallahu said, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي جَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ إِنْ صَلَحَتْ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ So there is a lump of flesh, the qalb, al-qalb, the heart in the body. If it sets right, then the action will set right. And we talk here about the foundation. So when we purify our heart, then the action will follow. We always go back to the foundation. So if the foundation, if you have a building and the foundation is actually good, then whatever happens in that building, it will stay upright. But if we have a bad foundation, it will collapse. When we go back to uh, Mecca and Medina, and the Prophet ﷺ was, and I talked about that last time, he stayed in Mecca for 13 years. All the Meccans ayat talked about the foundation. Not about the rulings. And I will talk about that a little bit more after this. So if we have a solid foundation, things will be easier. We will have tawakkul, taqwa ala Allah, tawakkul, tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taqwa, staying on the path. And we will be able to stay on it even if we were tested. And when we are asked to follow his command, it will be easier because the foundation. So when you have someone you love in your life, you would like to please them. We wanna love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we'll be able to do whatever He is asking of us easily. When we do something out of love, is easier than when we do something out of fear. So are we doing our ibadat out of fear or out of love? This is something to ask ourselves. So when we talk about the foundation, I would like to bring out the ayah of Hasimtum and Tadhulu al Jannata, Walama Yatikum Matalu Ladina Khalo Mil Kablikum, Masatum will Batsa or Dura or Zulilu, Hata Yakula Rasulu Ladina Amanu Mahu Mata Nasullah, Ella in a Nasullah Karim. Oh, do you think that you could enter paradise without having suffered like those believers who passed away before you? Misfortune and hardship befell them. And so shaken were they that the, the prophet and his believers with him would explain, 
when will God help us? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran here that people who came before us, they went through a lot. They were tested. They went through challenges. Entering paradise has a price. Everything has a price. So in order for us to enter paradise, we need to pass the test. We will be all tested. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you will be tested like others. And he talks about you zilzal in Arabic means earthquake. You'll be shaken to the core. And the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet in general will say, when Allah's help is gonna come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, I am close. Wanahnu aqrabu ilayhi. We are closer to you than the jugular vein. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine this. He's so close to us. If we are able to picture that, that will give us a lot of relief. When we are lonely, when we are sad, when we have difficulties, the idea and the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so close and he can hear us in any language, any time, in Arabic, in English, in Turkish, in Urdu, whatever the language you speak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands all. And he's closer to you than anyone else. Even closer to you than your parents, or your child, or your spouse. That's a relief. So we are able to withstand this, the earthquakes, and I mean the tests with our istiqamah, meaning the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawakkul and taqwa, being on the right path, having this trust, this reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want to talk about raising our children because this is actually related. A lot of us were raised, or a lot of children, were raised with shame, everything's haram, the hellfire, we use control, we use fear to control their behaviors. We might control their behaviors at the moment, but what will happen after? Are we building the foundation? They will learn to be avoidant, to deceive, to lie, to hide, or they will develop mental health issues like OCD, which is something I, I see a lot in my practice. And this stems from the way we raise our children. We focus on the outer ibadat and we forget about the inners. Because if we promote love and reliance and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the child will grow up loving Allah. Not afraid of him that he is grilling people all day long. I have so many stories about this. I cannot speak enough about how we raise our children and we do not focus on the foundation. So the Meccan surahs focused on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the relationship with him, human psychology, taqwa, retribution, jannah, jahannam, treating one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focused on that in Mecca. It was the first years of the da'wah he did not ask them then to cover, or I'm not saying that, we, I'm not undermining, of course, wearing hijab or anything. I am just saying there are, we need to uh, tackle first things first. The foundation, the iman, loving Allah, trusting him, then the other things come after. So we want to think of what we are doing, how we are raising our children. Are we starting with first things first? We want to start with the foundation, not with the rules. We want, to teach it, we want to teach them reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving Him, trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you love something or you love someone, you will do anything for them. We want that relationship between our children and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want it to be based on love, trust, connection. We need to teach our children that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy, merciful. More than we teach them about their wrath, his wrath, 
We don't want them to be scared. You know, sometimes we see in our communities there are a lot of houses, people who have houses. They, 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 they memorize the Quran. But then when you know, the, you know, from the back door, you know their lives, you get shocked. Sometimes some of them will be knocked down with the first test. That means the foundation was not focused on. So when we talk about healthy fear, so we need to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have fear and we have uh, uh, hope. But there is a difference between healthy fear and unhealthy one. So we talk about healthy one when we have taqwa, awareness. When we don't we do mistakes, we can go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent and say istighfar and purify our heart. The unhealthy one, I want to avoid it altogether. People avoid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the religion. We leave altogether and I've seen it. When we teach and raise our children based on fear that they are scared, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not loving, He will punish you based on haram and shame, they will not form connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and eventually they may leave the religion. We are responsible for that. If our action is driving people away from the religion, we will be asked. So how to build healthy fear? There are two things that we, I want to talk about tonight. First, perfectionism. Shame is built on the idea of perfection. A lot of us were raised in cultures with perfection. You come to, some people, will come, children would come to their parents, if they got below A or below um, the, the, the final grade, okay, why, why did you do that? Who else took the final? Well, I got the perfect grade. We always try to compare. We always try to uh, look for perfectionism. But can we really attain perfectionism? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants perfect uh, people on this earth, he would have brought angels, not human beings. Because angels don't do mistakes. Then end of the story. We will solve the problem. But Allah, this is the divine design that we are supposed to do mistakes and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance and istighfar and he will forgive us. This is the process. So Allah, the Prophet sallallahu said, Kullu bani adam, kulli bani adam khatta wa khayru khatta ina tawabun. So all of mankind, all human beings are, they will do mistakes and the best of them are the ones who repent. So we are supposed to be mistakes. Can we accept that? Can we accept that we are supposed to be flawed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. People's despair is rooted in perfectionism. We cannot think when it comes to religion in a black and white perspective. A believer is someone who makes mistake and continues to repent. Can we accept that for ourselves and our children? And shaitan plays tricks on us. So when we see us uh, um, worrying about imperfections, oh, okay, so you're imperfect, don't pray. Don't make dua. Shaitan will try to get to people, to the believer through these doors. I remember one time one person told, and I said that I think in the first uh, part, why, why would I pray? I mean, I, I, I've done a lot of mistakes. Allah, subhanahu, Allah will not forgive me, will, will not accept my dua. But there is always an answer to that. The shaitan, Iblis himself, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for respite. Ask him, give me a respite until the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to him. And he is shaitan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he accepted the dua of the shaitan, wouldn't he accept our dua? He will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us no matter what when we turn to him. And we don't need perfection in order for us to turn to him. 
But we do want to guard our eyes and tongues and ears. Do we do that? We want to ask ourselves that when we're on social media. Are we really guarding our eyes? Are we communicating with someone we're not communicating with? What is the purpose of communication? If we are communicating with someone, with something that is our, it's your spouse, right? Then actually you are betraying your spouse. If we are communicating with someone just for the heck of it, then this is actually preaching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and we are not actually uh, protecting our, our guarding our eyes or ears or tongue or our hand. And this will actually leave a black spot in our relationship with our spouses, ourselves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is our responsibility because sometimes no one is watching you. No one is watching us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching. So why are we afraid of people knowing but not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing us? So how to build a healthy fear? We want to take care of our inners, the foundation. Prayers, as car supplications, morning, evening, during the day. Sometimes you're rushing in the morning, you don't have time. If you're maybe driving, you can play something on your phone, listen to some du'as. That might help. Stay, stay connected to the Quran. Pay attention to your inner circle. Who's around you? Who, is, who are you communicating and hanging out with? Because you will be influenced by your inner circle. The istighfar is very important. It will purify your, our heart. And again, protecting our, and guarding our heart, our eyes, our ears and tongue. So at the end, before I say this last dua, we want to think about how, what is it that we want to change in our life in order for us to stay on the right path? What is it that we are doing that we need to change? What is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us and we know it's wrong? At the end, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to be among those who have destructive flaws and destructive personalities. I mean, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those whenever they wronged themselves, they made istighfar and took and take ownership and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship him in a better way than we were before. I mean, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rid us from anything displeasing to him and we ask him to forgive us and have mercy upon us, I mean, and overlook our shortcomings because, because his mercy is greater than our sins and greater than our shortcoming. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who long for him and long to meet him and be among those who prepare themselves for that meeting. I mean. Jazakumullah khair and thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so happy to be with all of you.